methods of extraction method mean okay now you did everything and you found that yes there is a mineral under the ground or on the surface so how you will take it out from the ground so that is known as extraction so now we'll see the different method of the extraction the first one is known as surface mining it also known as open cast it's also known as open pit it's also known as open cut and one another type of surface mining is known also strip mining will do in further it means uh, next uh, pages will do that for so surface mining means if they open say open cast if they say open pit if they say open cut it means that tall top types of the surface mining okay now one term is used that is overburden overburden mean that anything above the mineral that is known as overburden for example this is the earth and here is the mineral above you have trees you have like sand you have anything so anything above the mineral all this one trees and uh, you can say sand anything which is above the mineral that is known as overburden it mean that if you want to take that mineral out first you have to clear remove this overburden the vegetation is cleared upon the top soil so if you have any kind of plant so you first you will remove them second step the rocks are broke up and loosened with explosives explosion you will do the explosives and you will for example if the rock up there is a rocky area and then you have the mineral so first you will break down these rocks and how you will do with the help of explosions the loose rock is removed by using diggers then if you have broken okay you have now you have broken the rock then you have to remove it the rock and mineral is stripped into trucks and railways so then whatever the rock and mineral you will take them and you will send them to the factory or the refined area building materials such as sand gravel and stone are removed from open pit or the open cast of that is called quarries the question comes what is a quarry means the sand materials that the sorry the building material which one sand gravel and the stone which comes during the mining comes out from the ground when you are doing the mining so that's known as quarries the strip mining is used to mine a seam of mineral strip mine for example here this is the all area and here you have the minerals but you will do the mining in like a strip like this you will cut only this piece area you will dig only this area and take out the things from this area minerals not all together so it's like a strip so this is known as strip mining okay and this is the how they are doing this is the surface mining sub surface mining mean that they are going little bit under the ground okay it includes deep and shaft mining sub surface mean under the ground vertical shaft is sunk down to the rock layer containing minerals horizontal tunnel now what they are doing here they are going under the ground and how they are going the under the ground they have different possibilities they will make a shaft here drill it down and here is the minerals that take them out or they will make the like this dig the ground like this and then here they have the mineral here they have the mineral so sub surface mining means they are digging the ground going under the ground to take out the mineral so that's known as sub surface mining and when you will do the sub surface mining you will do the sub surface mining when the minerals are located too deep for the surface mining it means that you cannot do open cast mining because they are very deep so you cannot do because open cast the which we discussed is only the mineral which are near or above the ground or near the ground 
the shaft and passageways are dug into the ground to reach the ore, like this, this one here, they are reaching. So this is known as subsurface mining. Here's the examples, they have given different examples that people are going in the lift here, going down, they are working here, can you see then go back, or they have a kind of a slope mine with the help of stairs, they come in the day, work here and go back like this. You can do different techniques when you do the subsurface mining. The factor that affect the decision to extract and the rocks and, okay, now if you decided that, okay, you will take out the rocks or minerals. So what are the consequences? What are the damages on the environment? We'll see that one. Number one, the cost of exploration and extraction. So for example, if you want to extract the metal, so you should know how much it costs you. For example, let's say here you have aluminum and this aluminum is under the ground. If you want to take this aluminum out, you need the labor, I mean the people are worker, you need machines, you need, for example, the oil, you need other chemicals. So at the end, they will calculate that the aluminum they are taking out, it is more expensive or not. For example, one aluminum is in this area. This is area one. This is area two. Here they have aluminum near the ground. Here they have aluminum down to the ground. So they will see the cost, which is cheaper to take out, where they have to spend less money. So they will do that and they will leave the other one. So when they are doing the extraction, they are doing all these things that the, when they did the research, how much it cost everything. So the probable or the probably cost or the asymmetric cost of extracting one ton is calculated. There are fewer te uh, technical difficulties of mining on a large scale as using open fit mining. So then you have to also see that which type of method you will do for extraction. It will be open fit, it will be open cost, or it will be subsurface mining. That is also before extraction you have to think. After that, the geological. Then you have to see geologically. High grade ores yield more of the required chemical elements than low grade ores. It means that whenever you have the high grade ore, means the minerals, they are really expensive or they are in large quantity. So then you have to see that required chemical. What are the chemicals which are required to do that? Then the low grade ores. For example, you have two ores. This is high grade and other is low grade. Let's say here aluminum, you have 90% aluminum in this one. Here you have only 30%. Got it? So of course you will go by this one, for this one. Understand? So you have to see that if you go for the mining, so the minerals, our ore is coming, it is high grade or low grade? Small deposit of high grade are more worth mining. That's also small deposits of low grade that are cannot be mined at profit. So they will leave them. They will not take them out as a reserve. Maybe when they, there's no other option, then they will take it out. Then accessibility. Okay, you are doing the extraction. Can you transport those minerals to the factory or the refinery or not? If you will move them there, what the method you will use? You will move them by road. You will move them by the railway tracks. You will move them by ship. What the method you will use? Then you have to calculate that cost also. After that, in environmental impact. What is the environmental impact? For example, if there is a, uh, you can say, mineral under the ground, for that you have to cut the trees. You have to remove all the vegetation. So it means it will disturb your environmental ecosystem and also the habitat for a lot of animals, organisms. So then for that you, the government should give proper license to the companies who can do and who cannot do. 
it doesn't mean that everyone can have a choice to do that one. in that way they will destroy everything okay and if they are going to mine some area so there should be a choice maybe in that area you have lot of wildlife and the trees so it is it is not good to damage that area supply and demand you also keep in your mind that supply and demand is a relation mean, mean that how much you need and how much is available that's known as supply and demand now they're saying that if the people need demand more if you have a more for example now let's say this aluminium now only 10 people need aluminium okay out of 100 you have only these two pieces of aluminium so if 10 people need so only two you can give no problem if you have 100 and from 100 you have to give only two so then it's a competition then automatically the price of the aluminium will increase why because what is the demand before only 10 people now 100 people need that one but only two can get so then they will increase the price so that's known as supply and demand if you have something in a large quantity then it will be cheap you know sometimes in the market if you go to buy the tomatoes especially in uh, summer so they're expensive why because they from the farm less tomatoes coming to the market but in winter they are a lot because that is the season so it's cheaper so it depends on supply and demand 